Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Hytale modding guide. Today, we're going to be covering JSON files, and all you need to know about handling them and changing them. When it comes to Hytale, this will be used for creating your weapons, changing how weapons work, or using other weapons information to create your own custom weapons without necessarily having to code. JSON is really simple, and with that, we're going to get started. This video is divided into chapters. If you need to know anything, you can go to any of the aforementioned chapters on the timeline. So yeah, let's get right into it. I hope you all enjoy and let's get started with installation. Installation and requirements. When it comes to JSON files, there's a few things you can use to actually work with them. I personally use Visual Studio Code for the fact that I'm programming with that anyways. However, you can also use things such as Notepad++. This is a more enhanced version of the typical Notepad text editor which aids you when it comes to the actual structure of a JSON file. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. And with that, you can download from Windows here, or if you're on any other platforms, you can click here, and you can choose from Windows, Linux, and Mac. Thankfully, Visual Studio Code is semi-open source, so you're not limited at all. Now, if you're coming from Minecraft, you may know what a JSON file is. Even if you have never worked with one, you've probably seen one. Especially if you're a player that plays mods. If you've ever gone into the configs, you would know what a config file looks like. They are JSON files. This is a JSON file for a mod in Minecraft. For example, it has all the information you need to know, all the trues, all the false, everything that is editable and changeable for the player. Hytale weapons will have something similar. I'm going to show you how to create a JSON file from scratch and I'm gonna show you how to edit one and bring things in from a different JSON file. Common JSON format. So do two squiggly brackets. Inside, you can do in quotations, damage, then dot dot, and you can put a value. We can put the value as 20. We can say the attack speed. 30. As you can see, there is an issue here. What we need to use are commas after each of our declared values. So damage is 20, comma, attack speed is 30. We can also assign things such as name, and we can call it Bob. Same thing again, semicolon here. So this is a simple JSON file. This will work in most cases if you're just creating one item. However, sometimes you're not creating just one item and that's where a more complicated structure is required. Expanded JSON format. For a little bit more of a structured JSON file, it will start again with your two semicolons. Now we're going to give this a name. We're going to call this Sharp sword and we're going to do semicolon again however this time we do brackets i'm going to keep it structured this way just so it's more clear so you have your squiggly brackets your sharp sword and then your brackets i'm going to take the information we had previous we're going to pop it back in and here we go we have a sharp sword with the damage of 20, an attack speed of 30, and the name Bob. We can copy this information, and we can put it here and call it Blunt Sword. Put a comma after the sharp sword ends. It must be added here. And now we have a new item called Blunt Sword that contains its own information of its own damage value. We can say 5 with a slower attack speed, let's say 80. And the name is John. Don't know why we're going with real people names, but we'll go with it. This is the JSON structure that you would go about if you're holding several weapons or you have different categories. For example, here you have your sharp and your blunt. That's how you can keep track of like the way categories are structured. Now, there is another layer to a JSON file that I can show you. 
and that will be in demo tree. Advanced JSON format. So for the third and final demo, we're going to start with two squiggly brackets. And then once we have this, we're going to name this sharp underscore swords. And we're going to give this another set of squiggly brackets here. And inside these, we're going to say sword one. And with that, we're going to give it a list. And then we're also going to give this information all here. We can take the information from our previous demonstration, your damage, attack speed, and name. We'll paste it in here. So with this, you have your sharp swords with squiggly brackets, with sword one, with square brackets, and then squiggly brackets containing all the information inside. As you can see, the indent looks like this on my end. And with that, we can add another sword. We can add a comma after the square bracket. We can call this sword two. And then we can add the square brackets, add the squiggly brackets, and drop all the information in here again. Let's say the damage is five this time. The speed is 25. And the name is John. Uh, not John. We're going to call it Rex. Why not? With this way of handling a JSON file, you can hold all the information for all of your swords inside of sharp swords. And then you can create all your information for short swords or blunt swords by adding a comma after the sharp sword squiggly brackets, pasting it in again. And let's say we want to go with all our blunt, blunt, short, blunt swords this time. My bad. Now we have sharp swords as a category and blunt swords as a category. And within those, they contain several swords that have multiple values that are consistent between them. So I'm gonna just show all three demonstrations again. You have the basic demonstration where it's just two brackets and it contains the list of values. For example here, your damage, your attack speed, and your name. The second one is you have a squiggly bracket that then contains a sharp sword for example, one item with brackets and then the information contained and then a blunt sword with brackets and then the information conta contained. And then the final demo takes it one step further and categorizes several of an item underneath a category. So then you have several sharp swords contained underneath sharp swords and several blunt swords contained underneath blunt swords. Think of it like a tree system. The reason you should think of it as a tree system is because with the third demo, the actual values that you're looking for are nested within several loops. You have to look through all your short swords, swords themselves, to find all the values compared to the first demo showing all you have to do is find the values just by themselves. You don't have to worry about this unless you're going on to actual code. However, it's just good to understand how it's working. The good news is when it comes to Hytale, you're more than likely going to get JSON files such as demo tree here. They could be slightly different. They're probably much larger. However, the same principles apply. If you're to make a new weapon, it will be as simple as taking, let's say you like sword two in sharp swords, copying it, adding a comma, pasting it here and saying, my favorite sword. You can call it whatever you want. You can give it its own damage. Let's say you want to one shot everything, 500 damage, and you want to attack really, really fast. I usually use a lower value for attack speed. It depends on the game. But let's say your attack speed is 0 0.1. And the name is Super Powerful Terra Blade. Yep. So we have a Super Powerful Terra Blade in Hytale, now created. Let's say maybe this is how they handle it. It could be different in the full game. I won't know until we actually have access to the code, which I'll do a follow-up video in. Maybe the mesh... So you created your model using the previous guide. If you haven't watched the previous guide, make sure to go check it out below. 
But maybe there are meshes that you want to use for your weapon. It's more than likely something like mesh. And then it's going to be a path value. It may be a certain place, certain folder that you contain your files in. Again, won't know it until the game releases. But for example, we do a dot forward slash. This will be different when it comes to the actual path value on release. But let's say models forward slash my mesh. That would tell the game that this is the mesh that you want to use for your sword. It will make it appear the way you want it to appear in game. Maybe you want an icon for in the inventory. It might be something such as icon and then dot forward slash icons forward slash my icon. Of course, there's a mistake here. I forgot to put a comma just here. It's rinse and repeat. It's the same sort of content all the way through. Now on to my important information. Bonus tips when it comes to coding. JSON files are all string based documents. You'll see the values is 20 and 30 here. However, the computer will always read your values as string. So when the computer is taking every bit of information here, it will always read it as if it's some form of text in quotation marks. You don't have to worry about it usually, but if there's any issues, just keep track of how your values are being handled. Another bit of information I want you to know, especially if you're creating huge mods and adding a lot of items, JSON files can be very slow at information. So try to keep them as clean as possible and don't have unnecessary data contained within. If you're just copying from other Hytale weapons, you should be more than fine. But if you start adding in your own values to everything, it will slow it down a lot faster. Realistically, it's not going to affect anyone, but it's always good to know what can happen if you add too much. Another final thing I will let you know, you can go a little bit further. This is just a bonus part. If you wanted to have a list of different values for whatever reason on your weapon. Let's say you have elemental values. You can do your, again, make sure to put a comma, my bad. You can go and add in your square brackets here and you can say value one, comma, value two. Let's say this is water and this is air. You can do lists such as these as well within your data. Now, of course, if you're retrieving those elemental values, you're going into more loops. That is for much more advanced things. If you're trying to implement extra things to your weapons that do involve C-sharp code, this is where you'd go. More than likely, you won't have to worry about it when it comes to Hytale. Just copy and paste the weapons they already give you, change the mesh, change the skill ability, and just change the things that they already provide. If you want to go that step further, you now understand how to do it. But do let me know if you have any other questions. And be sure to join the Discord below because we're currently working towards bringing the Hytale server to life where we all get a chance to bring our mods in. If there's any mods that the community wants to add in, we can just click in, add them in, and we can play with them. We're going to be doing polls about it, and I want you to showcase what mods you come up with as well. Or models. Maybe you find someone who knows how to code and you want to make models. Maybe they can bring it into reality for you. So yeah, feel free to join that down below and let me know how you get on. The final thing I will let you know is there is a website called jsonlint.com, which can validate your JSON files. If you are really unsure on if your JSON file is correct or wrong, what you can do is, for example, we're going to copy our JSON file. We're going to paste it here and validate. As you can see, the JSON is valid. However, let's say we didn't know what we were doing wrong. We removed the comma and we removed a comma and then we click validate again. As you can see, this will give us the error on line nine. With that, it also highlights here on line nine, this is the issue. We're unsure of what the actual problem is, but we can take a look here and it was expecting an end of function, EOF for short. It was looking for the comma 
and instead it got a string. So what happened was it was looking for a comma here, but instead it retrieved this value, therefore breaking the JSON. What we can do then again, click validate. Oh, we have another issue. We can click here, add another comma, validate it, and our JSON is valid again. Therefore, it works. It's a handy way if you need to fix it or if there was any issues, and then you can also click here. This is a compressed JSON. This is how JSON will appear on the computer itself. This is how the computer reads a JSON file, all on one line. If you prettify it, it will look like the way I structured it. It's slightly different. I structure it just a little bit differently where I bring brackets like these underneath. However, this is the typical format you want to follow. A final bonus tip before the video ends that I want you to know is choose your JSON naming convention. There are several ways you can name a value. For example, you can capitalize each piece like this, or you can underscore each piece like this, or you can camel case it like this. It is up to you on what way you structure your JSON files. Like code, what I recommend is you pick one and stick with it. Do not change what way you structure your information as you're creating it. Otherwise, you're going to get confused as you develop. That is everything you need to know about JSON. I hope this video was useful for you. Do let me know down below and comment if there was anything else that was still confusing about how to use JSON files. In the next video, we plan to cover modding as a whole, starting with the basics of C Sharp and how you should structure code. I'll go over some of the fundamentals and then once Hytale releases, the plan is the server for creative and survival will be up. We'll have modding begin and we'll start implementing mods into the server itself based on what you want. Users are all free to join. So do make sure to join down below. I'll have that in the description. And with that, we'll also get a modeling video up and ready for when the plugin comes out. I know there's an unofficial plugin that came out right now, but I'm just holding off until the official Hytale Blockbench plugin comes out. And with that, we'll get to work on how our models should be done using any other official benefits that they might include within the plugin. But yeah, that's all for this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.